I'm Korean. I, I was born and raised in Togo, in West Africa. Unde kuku pleni kanam. I've got family from Africa, white, Asian. Ah, he has family from Ghana. It's finished. I'm, I never felt any other barrier after that. I speak French, English, and Korean. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. I know this is a little bit different um, video that we, most of us, are not used to. But there's something important about this video. What's your perception about Africa? My audience, African Americans, Africans in general. Look, this is the perspective of an Asian African, Asian Togo, who has stayed in Africa for more than 20 years. And this is our experience in Africa, going back to Korea. This is what he shared about Africa. I want us to watch this video with an open mind. Actually, there is something so interesting about Africa that this Asian African man provides out there. He exposes this in this podcast. And it is so interesting and it is also eye-opening to people who want to come to Africa, regardless of your race target african americans i want you to listen to his perspective probably you have a plan of coming back to the motherland you want to maybe come to visit africa you know this video will give you an eye opening some part of it which is really really important listen to his perspective as an asian person who has stayed in africa specifically togo for more than 20 years i want us to watch this video and then come back have a critical talk about Ike's, his, sorry, his experiences while he stayed in Africa. And even you can learn that his English is totally African. That's the beauty of Africa. So let's watch this video and then come back have a talk about it. We're going to have a talk. Me, El Vato. I'm Korean. I was born and raised in Africa. I'm the owner of Black Eyes Barbershop in South Korea in Seoul. Could you let the viewers know about your experiences in Togo and how that shaped your identity? My parents moved to Togo when I was in my mom's belly. So my dad, he got a job in a Korean factory in Africa. When I was born, we came back to Korea. And when I was six, seven years old, in 2000, we went back. And from 2000, I stayed there until I graduated high school, everything. I was born and raised there and I was even raised by like a black woman, an African woman, you know, when my parents are at work, you know, this woman, she's there singing me in the local language, you know. One similar thing with Asia is the respect that they have towards the el elderly and the big bros. So another key area, I mean, is languages as well. Oh, so you, you grew up with so many different mm. languages. Maybe you can tell the audience, like, what languages you speak mm. and how those languages kind of affect your personality. Mm. So I speak French, English and Korean. So I was speaking French with my friends just in the country. Everywhere I go, I speak French, but in school, I was speaking English because it was a British school. And at home, I would be speaking Korean. Korean was the hardest to learn because I didn't go to any Korean like schools or I didn't have any education in Korean. When I first came to Korea in 2012, I was actually kind of embarrassed of my English or my French. As I keep speaking, you know, this, this strong, like, African accent still comes out, you know, even in French and everything. So when I first came to Korea and I see all these Koreans from America, they have this, from England, they have British accents and American accents. And that's what the people here were used to. So when I come here, they're like, this guy, he, he speaks English, but where is this English from? You know, always like, bro, where are you from, man? Where are you from? What's your English? Where, where is it from? I'm like, man, this is Africa. So that's why before I was like, more quiet and I wasn't so talkative because I didn't want people to be like, what's this African accent? But now, bro, man, I'm unique, man. You see more of me, man. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, bro. Yeah, actually what you said about the, the different English accent, mm -hmm. I had the same experience when I moved to, to the UK because, you know, I grew up listening to, to American music. Mm -hmm and you know watching american mu movies and then when i arrived in london i had never heard the british accent <laughs> and i was like whoa <laughs> everything i knew about yeah. english just mm. i had to forget it i mean i i don't i don't want to be mean and all that i know a lot of people are going to criticize me for this but sometimes man it's it's kind of funny bro i mean let's let's yeah. not let's let's not um please please it's, it's funny man <laughs> i i don't know man you know those videos that we see on instagram we need the the how do you say the subtitles yeah bro we don't understand which one the the british yeah, british think, english uh, from um, from l you know from l bro just say what you so, think from, and from then liverpool you know ah. <laughs> 
Liverpool. We love Liverpool. We love Liverpool. Yeah, bro. I mean, yo. Can you do the accent? Bro. There's, there's this famous kid that co always comes out in this arse, um, this uh, interview. I'm serious. Ah, I'm serious. Yeah, 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 Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's that guy. Are you serious? <laughs> if you look at us, the first accent you expect to hear wouldn't be an African accent. But even I grew up at home with my grandfather saying, Hakim, come and eat some fufu now. Yeah, I, you know? The Ghanaians they always say, hey, Charlie. I had a um, Ghanaian um, teacher in my school. And this teacher, but every time, do you know what a day student is? Like a day student, boarding student? Someone who doesn't stay at the school. Yeah, they just yeah. come so and go. So I, I was a day student because I, I didn't live in the school. So every time like it's, school is over, we always used to like play Counter-Strike at school and everything. So when like school is over, the teacher was trying to send us away. And this is always what he says. All the day students, away. <laughs> away. <laughs> Ah, but that thing is too funny. Even the same for me. I went to Reunion Island. Mm. For those who don't know, it's a French overseas territory uh, near the Indian Ocean. And mm. it's very diverse there. They have their Creole. So I start to speak. I commencé to speak like, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And it becomes... I understood uh, one thing, maybe. Uh, you said... You said, how is he or something? Comment il est means like, how's it going? It's like, mm -hmm. ça va? Oh. Et dalon means like, mon ami. Ah, okay, okay. So. I only heard comment and then I just tried to analyze it. Uh, so it's, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing that over there, I went, I arrived in, okay, it's not mainland Africa, but it's still, it's, it's far away from mm -hmm. metropolitan France, but everyone's mixed there. They see me that I've got family from Africa, white, Asian. Mm. For them, it's nothing like, there's no kind of bad energy or discrimination. Everyone's interested and celebrates the different cultures. And I feel like you're someone who celebrates mm. different cultures more, maybe. I mean, the world should be more like the reunion, you know? Because why can't we just all live in peace? I mean, let's not go there, you know? We don't want to kill this mood. Yeah. Mm. I don't know any, like, how the reunion or, or like, how it is. is. Is the food African? It's so diverse. Like, looking around, you could be Réunionnais, I could be Réunionnais. Mm -hmm. They would classify you by, like, your, your race. But it's not in a bad way. Mm -hmm. So if they see you, they will call you Sinois. Mm -hmm. Because Sorry. there are a lot of people with Chinese origins. Mm -hmm. They will call me Zarab. Because I look more like the people who have um, North Indian mm -hmm. Muslim roots. And they were cool, like, you guys, a yab, because you're someone with more white roots. Mm. So the culture is a mix of whites, uh, black Africans, North and South Indians, and Chinese. So their food is completely a, a, a huge mix. Mm. So you have Indian-style food, you know, you have your dal puri, you have your samosa, samosa fromage. So there's that, the, fromage. that's like the French influence with that. You have, uh, you know, the masale, cabri masale. That's so that's, you kind of got the masala Indian curry. It is curry poulet <laughs> for, for curry, curry, chi chicken, chicken curry. curry. Yeah, so it's such a beautiful mix. And I feel like that sharing of cultures is what I grew up with. And um, yeah, it, it's beautiful, it really is. I miss the food so much in Africa, especially the, the plantain, man. Because you know, those are the kind of things you cannot get in this country, like plantain. I, I had. My first time I had plantain was just last month. Like a customer's mother saw my, one of my videos saying I really miss it and she brought it for me from Madagascar, man. That was the best meal I ever had in Korea, man. Plantain. Yeah. Nah, it, it, it's such a, you mentioned Madagascar as well and in Reunion there were so many people from there. Like the music, the influence, I think that's it as well. I walked into El Vato's shop last week and it felt like my dad was controlling the Spotify because the song, you know, Afrobeats, Jamaican music, like it's, it's just a huge influence on, on both of us, I think. Uh, could you speak more about like yeah, I think music? For the music side, is I noticed that a lot of people before they were telling me, why don't you just do a, like a DJ, you know? Because, you know, because I speak French, English and Korean, I have a very, and because I grew up in Africa, and you know, in Africa, we have a lot of like Rastafarians. There's a lot of things. So I learned from a lot of cultures, you know? So people were telling me like, how do I know all this music? But I mean, I just know it because I just like this music, you know, like reggae, Afropop. Afropop is starting to 
come up a little in Korea. I also try to make some Afro pop. <laughs> We're gonna put a link to those uh, yeah, to those songs. Yeah. Well, maybe you can. <laughs> yeah. Come to it if you want to. Yeah, yeah. Of course, of course, man. I mean, the people will find out themselves. I write music in English, and I try to like use some African accent, and I also like listening to reggae. So I also try doing like um, like patois. I never learned it, I never lived there, but because I listen to it so much, I can do it, you know. This is something that is often, like, uh, debated, I guess, but I grew up, you know, you can look at me and how I look, going to a lot of events, family events, where I was maybe, me and some of my, like, my brother or my dad, we're the only non, like, black people there. Mm. But I never, ever felt any discrimination. Mm. As soon as I said, oh, yeah, my grandfather was from Ghana, that's it, it's finished. Mm. We're always accepted. And they were just happy that we're all sharing the culture together. So I know some people like to see it as a divisive thing, like this is our culture or not. But my experiences, like with West Africans and Réunionnais, it was never anything uh, negative. It was always love mm -hmm. and bringing people together more than anything else. So You know, I relate to this a lot because from the outside, you might look at me and think, oh, he's from Eastern Europe or something like that. But I grew up in London, man. Mm. And actually a lot of my very close friends uh, are you, were... Are you British? British? Yeah, I'm British, but I have mixed, uh, mixed origins. Mm. So like from uh, Scotland, Wales, mm. actually a little bit from Eastern Europe as well. But I grew up in London. Um, most of my friends growing up were actually, my first best friend was Ghanaian. Mm. So actually I spent a lot of time at his house, man. And when you mentioned the uh, plantain, it just took me back to his house, you know? Mm. And yeah, so uh, it's crazy. Like uh, plantain, I've got good memories. Plantain, bro, this, that's love, man. <laughs> I mean, people who haven't tried it, don't don't even try it because you're gonna be looking for it, man. Yeah, it's better you don't know. <laughs> he was actually cutting my hair the day that customer brought brought him oh. the plantain. Oh, yeah. You were there? Yeah, I was here. Oh. Mm. Right, remember the happiness on his face, uh, you know? Bro, I was dancing, bro. I was dancing. I was dancing so yeah. much. Anywhere I went in Africa, I never felt of course you have like because i was asian you have this young kids who will come and try to like provoke me not in a bad way i mean they come and they maybe do like the eye sign or like make like jackie chan noises it's kind of before it was offensive but i mean later when you find out okay these kids they're just doing that for fun they're not trying to annoy me or something they just you know but you know in africa in togo i went to like this like places to where even the, my friends were not go to, like the ghetto, ghetto, ghetto. And even when I went there, I never felt any danger. I never felt any danger, but, but that area in Togo, when you go to there are a place called um, Ebe, so that's uh, the, the neighborhood called Ebe. All the Togolese people who hear me say Ebe, they know. That place, man, it's, uh, it's kind of dangerous, you know? Mm. But when I go there, nothing. I just go park my car, hanging around with the ghetto, you know, Rastafarians, all that. I mean, it's the best. It's the best. But it's the same. I mean, growing up in the UK, you hear areas like, wow, Peckham and Brixton, you know, these have a large Afro-Caribbean community. I would spend time in these areas as a kid with family. And it, it's, yeah, I know the, I'm sure in some places there are problems, but the way the media kind of portrays those areas, for, for me, these are cherished like family moments where again i always felt welcome mm -hmm. and something i've found is that a lot of people are often expecting you to be scared of them yeah. because the media shows particular people mm -hmm. uh, as dangerous and once you actually show no 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 i'm not i'm not being influenced by the media oh, no, yeah absolutely. yeah cool. did you ever get questions like <clears throat> you know when you just left the reunion and you went to the uk when you just arrived and you're like, hey, hi, I'm Hakim, how are you? Where are you from? I'm from the reunion. Yes, do people come and, do people ask you like, do you see lions like in the streets? Like, do you see elephants in your daily life? Do you get questions like that? Well, the reality is most British people have no idea what it is. So you get a lot of crazy questions, you know, were there guns, was it dangerous, everything. When actually reunion is mm. tranquille mm. is the word that they use. So there's just a lot of misinformation on the media, but I'm sure. How about your experiences bro, in Korea? Go. Bro, man, these people come and ask me if I see hyenas and lions. Bro, I told them, of course, I saw a hyena, I saw a lion. But I saw them in a damn zoo, <laughs> bro. <laughs> bro, I drive a car. <laughs> 
people ride on motorbikes, man. They're not on horses, man. Whoa, yo, like, yo. People, I mean, but before I was offended when they were asking me that, because I, I was thinking this, guy's like, this guy was just trying to annoy me. But later, I found out that it's, it's a really naive question. These guys really don't know. Like, mm. they really think that sometimes if I'm like at night, they will hear like a lion, like, <laughs> you know. But I, I, I didn't know that they were s serious about the question because I was very offended, man. Yo, I told them, if you want to see elephants, go to Thailand, man. They have more elephants than in Africa, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, listen. From watching the video, I can actually tell you, we Africans, we are the most accepting people. And this is where it all started. It started in the motherland. And anyone, regardless of your race, they can cope up with africa live alone people will usually come and tells you that oh africa this africa that no 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 no. this is an asian person okay he was born in africa togo to be specific um from his story his ma his mother um carried her in her womb you know she wasn't born okay she was conceived in korea born in africa you know so it means that he was raised in an African setting. He was raised in African society. And there are some special things that he learned that he cannot allow to be taken away from him. Because, okay, for me, I will say that um, phenotypically, he might not be African, you know? But um, psychologically, he's African. Trust me, he's African. You could see his perspective. You could see his talk. Another interesting thing about his perspective about Africa, he also demystifies or he also exposes the um, misconceptions that people usually have about Africa. And he gave an example that some people ask him, do you guys have lions? Do you guys have elephants in your place? And he told them, Africa is beautiful. I don't know what these people told you guys, but Africa is beautiful. Now, look at this message is so appealing to African Americans or diasporans who are planning to come to Africa. The essence of this, this is an Asian American person. He, he survived in Africa. You can also do that. Because imagine he has a different color. Phenotypically, he's white, you know, he's, he's from Korea. And the skin shows itself. But we are trying to think outside race, you know. But critically, understanding where this person is being um, raised in African setting. He hasn't explained anything about racism. Nobody has ever um, showed him. Of course, they are asked to be like, you know, something which is phenotypical. People can say that, okay, you are a little bit different. But we Africans, we are so accepting. We are so friendly. And when you come to the motherland, trust me, leave alone the small percentage of bad things that you'll experience. Look about the positive things, the positive sides of the things that you'll experience while coming to the motherland. And that's the point of tapping in. Don't tap on the negative side. Kindly put your energy, put your frequency on the positive side of Africa. And trust me, you will have a better experience and a better picture of Africa. Actually, as a native, as an African from Kenya, Togo, just um, our brother country in Africa, it gave me a perspective of Africans that me, myself, I never knew, you know. So it is always important getting it from a different perspective about what Africa is like to be. Because if you hear it from a person like me, you can say that, oh, it's a bias. Oh, um, I just want you to come to the motherland, you know. But this is from his perspective. Now he went back to a podcast in Korea and his friends are trying to ask him, what is it like to be in Africa? What does it feel like to be in Africa? You see it for yourself. You feel it for yourself. I mean, it, it's raining. I'm going to close the window. Kindly pray for Kenya. It's really, really raining out here. And we have been facing a lot of floods. We thought that it started with Dubai. But I think God will help us um, overcome this. It's something which is small. And our drainage system sucks. We're well, in Africa, Kenya especially from you know so uh back to my point this person has showed me another perspective another angle of truly we africans we are so 
receiving we are so accepting and we don't judge you we are beautiful people i want to give you an example we have travelers who have come to africa we have ichibuts uh we have kino Ives. these are people who came from overseas they came to africa and they keep on traveling to africa trust me if there could have been bad things about africa they could have stopped and even the small things are micro things like just small small things that even we natives we deal with so looking at this video it gave me a special perspective about it and my special appeal to my brothers and sisters especially diasporans who wants to come to the motherland i think this is the best time to come to africa this is the best time to choose your country to come uh, to come to the brother the asian um the the, uh, the asian african who came to um togo is living in togo and he is so so happy and he can tell you that he is even fallen in love with our delicacies he talked about uh, plantains that's something which is so beautiful something which is outside their culture in back in korea you know um you know having different perspective of africa getting it from a different person actually gives some light on what personally me as an african person who is born and raised in africa always have thought about my country what do you guys think about this people from togo who will be watching this video for the first time what do you think about this africans in general what do you think about this what about diasporans what do you think about his experiences hmm? this video is so so important it might seem so um superficial because it just shows an asian person who is born in africa no it, this video is so deep in the sense that you could get a perspective from a person who is different in the sense that he's not like biologically african you know but the positive things he said about Africa, it could really tell you the truth. And that's honest, that's blatant about Africa. Anybody, ask anybody, they could tell you this. This is so, so blatant about Africa. Come in Africa and see it for yourself. You've heard the stories for a long time, you know. You've heard the stories for a long time from different people, from different places. Come to Africa. Come to Africa africa it is the time to write your own story stop listening to people's story now come and experience it yourself by your own for yourself i'm not telling you even to come and stay here forever no just come and have a visit have a perspective about africa yeah that's all and i might be kind enough to host you you know yeah so tell me guys what you think about this in the comment section this is your gene techie stories until then peace love and harmony salute remember peace be with you let's meet on the next video which is here to happen and oh, oh, oh before forgetting if you're watching this video for the first time you can consider subscribing to my channel join my membership and let's have a chat you know my email is also on my bio if you have any inquiry you know what to do you can always email me anytime i'm always online i'll reply to your email until then peace love and harmony salute